The Champion of Champions Award is given to someone who has made a significant difference and a lasting difference to their local community. In the 2014 awards, this particular nominee has raised over £30,000 to support a local cancer charity and hospice. An incredible achievement in itself made even more poignant when we learn that they were battling terminal cancer. Rachel Venables from Flint was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2007. Sadly, in February 2012, Rachel received the news that the cancer had spread to her lungs, liver, bones and ovaries. Despite this, Rachel vowed to fight against the disease for as long as she could and raise as much money as possible for a local charity close to her heart. Sadly, Rachel lost her battle with cancer earlier this year. I met Rachel's husband, Mark, to find out more about the incredible legacy that Rachel has left behind. Mark, first of all, thank you very much indeed for inviting us into your home today. Can you share with us um, what type of a person Rachel was? She was so bubbly, outgoing, she was friendly, she, she was so unselfish and loving. She just, uh, she would help anybody. You know, she, she would always think of others first. That was who she was. She was a great mother as well. When the news was, was broken to, to you as a family about Rachel's illness and, and what the prognosis was, how, how, did, how did you tackle that as, as a family unit? Obviously, first of all, we were devastated and then um, angry, upset, you know, that this disease has, has taken over our lives. And then you sort of, you sort of step back you sort of get over, you know, you get rid of the tears and you think, right, what are we going to do here now? You know, we can't just let it get to you. We've got to pull together and just make the most of life, really. And that's what we tried to do, and I think we did do that. Out of something obviously so, so devastating and heartbreaking, there were positives, of course, in terms of, of the fundraising campaign. When did the idea come from, from Rachel to, to raise some money? Well, I think it was shortly after she'd received some amazing treatment from the, the cancer unit in Glen Cluid. When she was having the treatment, she'd, she'd look around and say, OK, they haven't got this, they haven't got that. And she said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Mark. I'm going to put a target of £3,000 towards raising money, funds, for equipment for, for the cancer unit in, in Glen Cluid. And from 3000 within the first week, I think, she, she, she'd got 2000 And we couldn't quite believe it. And it just went on and on and on. And, and it just it snowballed into something that we just never imagined. Really, it was amazing. The equipment that she she raised money for, uh, it's helping to do things that they couldn't help with Rachel at the time. So she thought this is going to make patients' lives easier and also the nurses as well. And, and we're just so happy and, and proud and made up that, that she could achieve this. What would she make of this nomination, do you think? Well, I'm sure she's looking down and she will have a smile on her face and everybody who knew her would, would remember that smile. A truly remarkable woman because she deserves um, she deserves this for what she went through. She was going through a lot of pain at the time and um, it took her mind off her pain and it gave her something else to think about and she just wanted to help as much as she could to raise money, as much money as she possibly could, to help others in her position. So she should be happy with this. Um, thank you very much indeed for, for telling us about some times which must have been incredibly difficult, uh, but Rachel, uh, a, a true inspiration uh, to, to many, many people. Thank you. Well, we've been hearing about the tireless fundraising uh, undertaken by Rachel Venables, inspiring friends and family. So I thought it only right to meet up with some of Rachel's friends. Uh, with me are Kev, Cheryl and Claire. Kev, first of all to you, if we may, uh, what type of a friend was Rachel and how did she, how did she inspire you to get involved with the fundraising? Rachel had a massive heart and just knowing her all these years, it was just second nature really for us to just jump in and really help her out when she needed to and help others more importantly. Despite the fact that she was really poorly, 
She wanted to help others and she really wanted to set that path right. Tell us about some of the, the fundraising activities that, that you all put on. The main event was our charity dinner dance that we held at the Holiday Inn. We sold tickets um, and we filled within 24 hours. It was just, I could not believe the support that we actually had. We had lots of um, donations given for um, raffles, an auction, and we just had a fantastic evening. It was just amazing. Yeah. There was a lot of really big prizes, wasn't there? Uh, Plascourt Holiday Homes, which was where she was working when she passed away. They all gave to the golf charity do that Kerry Noble put on and to our charity auction dinner dance. There was other things, hoovers, cameras, bottles of wine, prizes given from Ant and Deck, which came through Rachel's sister, Ruth. We were just overwhelmed. And the support and energy that she got from all of her friends and family just came in in boundless quantity. She felt so, so supported by the process of, of what everybody went through in terms of raising funds for our lass and for the really, really positive difference she wanted to make to other people who'd been through the same treatment as she had. Um, I went to visit Rachel a few days before she passed away at Nightingale House. I think it was about a week before. And I was just overwhelmed by just the care she was receiving. She was really happy there. And, and she, she, she was absolutely adamant, when I get out of here, I'm going to raise some money for this place. And so I think, you know, Rachel's not with us now, but we will keep Rachel with us by raising more money next year and, and, and promoting, keeping Rachel alive. When you learnt that Rachel had been nominated for our award this evening at the Champion of Champions, how, how did you feel? I just, I think it's amazing. It couldn't go to anyone better. She is certainly still here. She's deserved, she's, it. She's she deserves, deserves it so she much. She deserves to win it. Absolutely. Absolutely. She's our strength. She's our legacy. She's the, these are the things that have got us through these yeah. past six months since we've lost her. Everything that she set up, we can carry on in some small way. Mm -hmm. And that just makes us very, very proud and immensely yeah. delighted that she's in this position now to be able to receive this nomination. She's lost her wings, but we're going to keep flying. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Very inspi inspirational. Mm. Before Rachel passed away, she was able to come here to the North Wales Cancer Treatment Centre to find out how that money had been spent on vital equipment. I'm here today to meet some of the staff and to see how Rachel's fundraising really has made a difference. So your award sister here at the North Wales Cancer Treatment Centre. You must see firsthand the benefits that the fundraising that Rachel undertook have brought to the centre. How's it helped your patients? Well, um, Rachel has improved uh, the experience for many patients here at the North Wales Cancer Treatment Centre. And we use a machine to help find patients' veins, but we often ended up lending it to other departments. And so Rachel decided that it was something that she would like to try and help so that patients could easily be using this equipment. Um, she also provided um, some aids to help move patients um, from bed to chair and those kind of things. She felt that she had a really good experience of coming for her treatment. She was really positive about her treatment and she wanted other people to experience the same thing. She had an ethos of wanting to live with her cancer and, and not die of it basically. And so she used that as her impetus really then to, uh, to, to raise this money. And the fundraising just went on. She was a very inspirational person. Dr Bishop, you were Rachel's consultant during a, a very difficult period of her life. Despite all of that, Rachel remained focused on raising money to help others here at the centre. A truly remarkable lady. It's difficult not to get attached to patients, one always does. Um, but some more so than others and, and Rachel's personality was such she just genuinely wanted to make things better for her um, and she wanted to make things better for other people and I think even towards the end of her life she was still talking about seeing other people doing things for other people, raising vast quantities of money, encouraging other people to, to raise vast quantities. It was quite amazing. I, it, it's not commonly that we, we see that and someone who remains so positive all the way through. It was fantastic. 
Okay, so you're head of fundraising here at Our Last Blue Sky. Um, can you tell us about the charity and how important it is for people like Rachel to raise awareness about the work that you do? It's incredibly important. Without people like Rachel and without the support of, of all of her friends, family and everyone else who got behind Rachel's appeal, the charity just, just frankly wouldn't exist. Our Last is the NHS charity for North Wales. Rachel really was incredibly special because she encapsulated everything about what, what the charity is about in terms of brightening up people's days. That's what she was always very good at. Um, my colleagues were with, with Rachel um, just a, a few days before she passed when she, when she received a, a cheque um, from the uh, Karen Keating Foundation. Um, incredible, £10,000 from, from the Foundation who had been again so moved by everything that Rachel's family, friends and strangers had managed to achieve raising such a formidable amount of money. But it wasn't just about raising money, it was about raising the spirits not only of herself but everyone else that was involved in the campaign. And that's something that will not just live in, live in, you know, mine and everybody else's lives that were touched by by Rachel and, and and her friends and everything that they've achieved. But it's a story that we'll be telling for many, many years to come. Rachel wanted to help others facing a similar battle to her. Those wishes live on through the work carried out here at the North Wales Cancer Treatment Centre and the local hospice. Thanks to the support and love of her friends and family, the legacy of Rachel Venables remains a strong one.